<clears throat> so I want to give you an overview of the work that Muckleshoot's been doing in and around Mount Rainier. I've worked with the tribe since 1996 and have flown uh, the elk surveys in the fall and spring since 96, uh, both inside the park and outside the park. Uh, White River elk herd is a subpopulation of the WDFW North Rainier elk herd. And uh, the tribe started marking animals in 1998 in response to declining elk numbers in the White River. We capture animals on winter range and the study area is determined by the extent of where the animals go to. For the most part, I'm just going to show you the GPS uh, data since the DHF points would be obliterated by all the GPS data and only for animals marking the White River except cougar. Next, please, slide. So uh, the past work that's been done in the park, uh, Bradley defined survey units in the early 80s and developed the E4 method of uh, surveying. And in the mid 80s, Cooper had marked animals to delineate some seasonal ranges, but he was limited by sample size areas that the animals were captured in on the winter range and DHF technology, <clears throat> and also as a master's project. Other work in the park and around the park is focused on habitat, if elk were native, and if they were causing damage to the park resources. Slide, please. The tribe's study objectives for elk are population estimation, body condition, survival rate, and causes of mortality, and kind of identify movements and migration routes, get a handle on pregnancy rates, because that's a good indicator of habitat conditions and habitat use. As for deer, it's a very similar objective, except we didn't do body condition work for deer. For, elk, for a cougar, we're uh, using marked animals as population monitoring and going into clusters of kill GPS locations to get kill rates and prey selection, as well as cause survival and cause the mortality of cougars, but that's a less important aspect of the study. For bears, we're using it for density estimation, tree peeling and damage, along with feeder use, uh, den selection and behavior, and develop a White River Black Bear Management Plan. We feel that our studies take a multi-trophic perspective, looking at the predator, prey, and habitat, and we monitor the feedback between prey and habitat by looking at body condition and pregnancy rates and calf cow ratios as indicators of uh, habitat. Slide, please. So every year we keep track of uh, marked elk that uh, spend time uh, during summer in Mount Rainier, as well as outside. <clears throat> the um, of uh, 248 elk that we've marked since uh, we started that lived through the first su summer after capture, 118 used the park and uh, and uh, resulting in about 48 percent overall of our marked animals spending time during summer within the park. The graph here shows the proportion of elk and the number of elk annually that use uh, Mount Rainier during summer. The uh, decline isn't real. It might be uh, related to our expanding expansion of the capture area. Early on, we focused on the eastern side of the watershed where those elk spend more time migrating and go to Mount Rainier. And more recently, we've moved west and those animals are uh, more non-migratory. There's also a very active timber harvest that occurred in the mid 2000s that uh, resulted in a lot of uh, forage and lazy elk, I think, that um, ended up not migrating because they had abundant food available for them. And also a disproportionate tribal harvest of some cows in the White River. Now, cow, um, we've asked other tribes not to harvest cows since 1998 in the White River, but there is still some of that occurring. and. With uh, corporate timber lands being somewhat off limits to tribes, they have to focus their harvest on forest service lands, which are the winter range of many of the migratory animals that go up to Mount Rainier. So there's been a modest harvest of cows in the on forest service lands, and those are more migratory than the than the um, that reside on the corporate timber lands. Next, please. <clears throat> We studied elk body condition from 1998 through 2007, doing repeated captures in fall and spring of, of the same animals. Uh, one thing we discovered was that body fat of lactating cows that migrated to Mount Rainier was much, was much higher and significantly higher than animals that did not migrate. What the consequences of this are, are that elk coming into winter will have more fat and be able to survive winters better than non-migratory animals and calves are likely to be in better condition and larger too. 
the more the higher body fat levels is due to um, greater forage abundance and quality at higher elevations in the mountain hemlock and Pacific silver fir zones, as well as some the subalpine areas, and also animals following plant phenology and later senescence uh, at higher elevations and at lower elevations. So there is a positive benefit to migration, but not all animals migrate. Our overall strategy is to maintain migratory behavior in the White River elk herd and make full use of the landscape in summer and encouraging those animals to move to Mount Rainier. Next, please. So Bradley started collecting population data using the E4 method back in the early 80s. And WDFW did a couple of paintball estimates on winter range. We started our mark recite using a Lincoln-Peterson approach, uh, surveying elk in the White River starting uh, in biological year 2000 or 1998 which is in the yellow line. And there was a divergence between what we were seeing with the population growing in the White River from around 2000 onward, while the numbers that we were seeing in Mount Rainier using the E4 methods were declining. So in 2007, the NPS proposed to develop an alternate method of surveying other than the E4. And they, they used uh, marked elk that MIT had in the north part of the park and marked elk that the Puyallup tribe had in the south part of the park to develop a double observer sightability model. And the data here on the E4 values, the green data from 2008 through 2011 was actually using the double observer sightability data to, um, to come up with that E4 estimate because the flights were a little more intensive and they covered more area than the typical E4 flight. Unfortunately, WDFW was the first to abandon the cooperative fall surveys that we did with the Park Service, and um, the Park Service followed suit in 2018. So that's why the <clears throat> red lines, the double observer sightability, um, ended in 2017. Buckle shoots continued to survey uh, for composition data in the park uh, since then. We also filled in that one data point in 2017 when they're wasn't a double observer sightability flight because everyone was trying to figure out what they were going to do at that point and beyond. Uh, next, please. So one aspect of survey data is trying to come up with bull cow ratios and calf cow ratios as uh, potential indicators of potential harvest and, and production. The red line shows the calf cow ratios in the fall amount Rainier and the spring uh, ratios are in blue. And the two boxes highlight areas where there's a fairly large difference between those ratios. And what that tells us most likely is that there's higher mortality occurring on calves after they <coughs> return to the winter range. It also could be due to um, those migratory animals remaining uh, on, the, on the winter range and having lower produ productivity and also being susceptible to higher calf predation. So that um, and diluting what might occur had, um, had they been included in those animals uh, during the fall survey. But the, so basically, Muckleshoot feels that the composition data in the fall and the spring is important for managing the White River elk herd, and therefore, we continue to do those surveys. Next, please. So here's a map showing the GPS locations of uh, 100, let's say 163 of those GPS marked elk. Um, We've marked 259 since 1998 and 163 since 2004. Two elk use the Clearwater Wilderness, but what you can see from this map are fairly obvious migration routes. And also um, high use areas and areas where there's holes, where there is little or no use at all. We've also marked 313 calves in the White River, <coughs> about a quarter of which use Mount Rainier, but those weren't with GPS. And um, I'm not gonna show any data from those animals. Next, please. So zooming in on the northern part of the park, which is the black line, that's the boundary between the Forest Service and Mount Rainier. Yellow lines show the survey, uh, the delineations of the survey units for the double observer sightability model. There's uh, 65 elk represented in the GPS points here. And you can see some of those um, survey units really well capture those the elk use within the park, but other areas where there's no animals at all or very few animal locations within those survey units. And then there's also some use outside the area. So there's there's kind of an availability bias in these surveys that occur. 
And what needs to be understood is that the estimates within the park are only those animals that are using those areas within the survey units and not necessarily the entire population that use the north part of the park. Uh, the VH, the lower left hand corner shows a VHF animal that was our longest migrator. She went from Boundary Creek area near the Mount Rainier Overlook along Highway 410 down to uh, Ohana Pakash River. And so that was our, to bet we didn't have GPS collars in those days would have been nice to document her movements. Next, please. And as for black-tailed deer, uh, we've marked 116 female black-tailed deer between 2004 and 2017. 49 of those were with GPS collars. And one of the surprising things is only seven of the 116 deer were migratory. So very low migratory component within the White River elk herd. Three deer used Mount Rainier. One was up in Pigeon Creek. That was a VHF marked animal. And um, we had two GPS animals using the park. And you can see their movements there shown in those lines and uh, the summer range use by Grand Park and also Carbon River within the, within the park. Uh, next, please. Two minutes only, oh my goodness. <coughs> I'm working on it. Uh, cougar, this is an overview of our 34 marked cougar and we've had um, very little use within the park. Go on to the next slide, please. Zooming in, you can see we've had uh, three male cats use the park, um, one just a little tiny bit, uh, two use it a little bit more. The larger splotches are, are um, point clusters where we investigate for kills and uh, try to identify what the animals were killed. Within the park, we've only had one kill site that we've examined, all the others we have a difficult time having time and staff to get to it. Uh, next, please. As for bear, we've marked 63 with GPS collars, and the map here shows 42 of those. Uh, we've had <coughs> only seven that have bumped up against the border in Mount Rainier and not go in. Next uh, slide. One female barely came in. She's in the Blue Points. We had um, three males use the park. They came deeper into it, and we also had one bear then within the park. Next. As far as mortalities, very few mortalities, only three adult cows and eight calves have died within the park. And that's uh, for the amount of use that we see, there's very, very little. Uh, next. And there's some science products that have come out of the work that we've done. The West Side Elk monograph, a lot of Muckleshoot data was involved and also Muckleshoot developed a um, kind of a carrying capacity type approach at estimating what the potential for the landscape is to support elk. And we can compare that between, say, the corporate timberlands up north and the Forest Service and the park areas to the south. And that's it. What ready for questions? Great. And we have time for a couple questions. And if we don't have time to get all to, to all of them, please feel free to put them in the chat. And hopefully Dave can answer them there. Uh, I don't see any in the chat at the moment. Does anybody have any questions? Great chat talk, Dave. Thanks. I have a question if nobody else does. I'm curious how you think we could in encourage more movement. You said you wanted to see more migration in the elk. And so I was curious if you had some ideas of how that might be encouraged. So the, the, while we can't encourage the current individuals, what we can do is selectively harvest those elk that are residents and increase the proportion of the herd that's migratory and then have an overall increase in the population. So if we resume uh, antlerless elk harvest in the White River, my proposal is to harvest those animals prior to migration. So we would be selectively harvesting residents, non-migratory animals and not harvesting migratory ones. So that's how we would try to promote more migration within the population. Thanks. 